today on Nation. It's fine. It's all rainbows and butterflies and unicorns. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Stay tuned to WCR Nation, the Window Cleaners Podcast. What's going on, everybody? Jersey here from WCR, windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? Thanks for hanging out with me. If it's your first time here, take a look around. If you got time, we have 146 episodes to catch up on. That's 146 straight weeks that we've done this show. Comes out every single Friday. Have a look around. Found anywhere podcasts are, and of course on YouTube. If you are one of the nation, one of the cool kids, if you watch every episode, you've seen them all, you've binged them, you've thumbsed up our videos, and you've commented, but most importantly, you buy your supplies through me. It is the reason that I am making it through this slump. It's because of you guys. Uh, truly, though, I know I say this a lot, but uh, anybody who orders through me still, and you make it a point to order from me, I know uh, little orders, big orders, it does not matter. I really, really do appreciate it, guys. Uh, if you are ordering through me, believe me that it does not go uh, unnoticed that some of you are just so loyal and put all your orders through me. It's really, really amazing, and I really thank you. It costs you nothing extra if you want to be uh, one of the cool kids and put your order in through me, too. My number is 862-312-2026. At the end of this episode, I'll give you a, a super awesome code for 5% off. But uh, putting an order in through me, all you got to do, put it in your cart if you want. Or you can let me know and I'll put it in your cart. Uh, but either way, text me, shoot me a uh, call, whatever. Say, yo, Jersey, it's in my cart. Put my order in. And that is it. I make it super easy. Well, at least I try. And I want to be your rep. Uh, but I do appreciate it, guys. I try to have a little bit of fun. Uh, but uh, truly, sincerely, thank you for letting me put orders in. Again, 862-312-2026. A uh, few people I want to say what's up to. First off, Spaz. What's up, man? Uh, Spaz. I know I was going to mess that name up, uh, but Marinkoff is the last name. What's up, man? Uh, Adam Dreyer, what's going on? Marvin Snyder, the man. And Chris Johnson, what's going on? Uh, just want to say what's up to you guys. Um, if you uh, are watching, commenting, anything, and you are on YouTube, put a comment. Uh, go ahead and thumbs up the video on YouTube. We have a ton of people listen and watch on YouTube, and uh, we don't have as many comments as there should be, so say what's up. Even pull a Ryan Fuster and just put a thumbs up emoji on the comments. It helps us track things better and share the content if you want. That also helps me uh, get this show going bigger and better every time. So anyway, uh, first off, I want to say hopefully everybody out there is healthy. Uh, I don't really want to talk negative anymore about what's going on. It's just it's gotten to me uh, in my brain, and I just don't want to anymore. So we're going to talk positive. We're going back to sunshines, man. Um, I want to go back to sunshines. And the big thing with what's going on now is that this is a temporary thing. It sucks. It sucks, but it's temporary. So how do we like? How do we look at this in kind of the positive side of things. There's a lot of positive things that are coming from this, at least that I know. And again, I'm some dude with a mic. I don't know anything more than anybody else. And uh, I could just tell you what my gut is feeling and what my thoughts are, you know, and that's what I'm going to do. Um, there's a lot of good that will eventually come from this. If you know where to look, if you know what to focus on, if it's raining, you know that every cloud runs out of rain right? You know that um, a beautiful sunny day makes you understand uh, how miserable a cloudy day is, but the miserable cloudy day makes you realize how much you miss and love the sun. So the downside is, is that we have to weather this whole crap storm first, and then we will get into the positives, and there are a few of them. So first off, guys, it's spring, or will be spring. Very, very soon. We got a nice row, uh, week of 80s coming up here starting tomorrow. The sun is out. The pollen is down. Uh, the allergies are crazy. 
Uh, but that is the signal of spring. Like it should be crazy right now and it still will be. So here's the thing. There's a couple ways this all will play out and it's going to be either two weeks and things are going to come back like a hammer or it's going to be two weeks and things come back slowly and then totally exceed. But I'm telling you right now, the way that the economy was going, we had that giant dip. It's going to slingshot back up. I'm telling you, mark my words, save this. Our, um, our economy will be better off even than it was before. It's just how fast it comes back. So what do we got to do? We have to be ready as contractors. The downside to doing what we do, now I'm talking window cleaning, pressure washing, uh, even janitorial, lawn services. Like all of us as uh, service contractors, we are weather and season orientated. A lot of us. There's people out in Cali and certain parts that are like kind of straight across the board all the time. That's cool. Not necessarily focusing on those, but all the other areas. If you're in Minnesota, Wisconsin. If you're in all of those places right now, it's not spring. There's no pollen. There's no leaves. It's still cold. Well, it's getting nicer, but you know what I'm saying, right? Spring's not there yet. So this whole thing is actually kind of nice because it's not affecting you as much as it is somebody that is like us, where we are in our push for spring. Um, when this all comes down, we're going to have something, in my opinion, that's called a second spring. A second spring is going to happen probably a little bit later, uh, probably maybe around April, June, or uh, maybe May, June, somewhere in there. And what that's going to happen is, is that when this is all done, and in the soon, sooner than later, when this all, everybody, okay, back to work, quarantines are done, then you're going to see this thing come back. But that big blow of spring is going to happen. The second thing is going to be people when they start seeing that certainty, everything starts going back up and they see it's going back up for a month. They're going to be like, okay, you know what? I think we're good. Let's get those windows done. There's going to be something that is called a second spring. That's my guess. Uh, and that's going to be a second new season this year. That's not going to be fall. It's not going to be really spring. It's going to be something else. That second spring is going to be a giant push for us. And there's a few things. Now, I tell you this all the time. We need to have our literature, EDDM, uh, door hangers, all that stuff printed right now and ready. Because as soon as that happens, it's going to come so fast. As fast as this thing started, it's going to be all over with. And we're going to be back into spring and then second spring. So those things get all that stuff ready. But second spring, I think, is going to be a new season. It's just this year. It's not going to be every year, obviously. But it's going to be where people are certain to kind of try to catch up and they're still going to have fall. Um, second spring is going to be where we get a lot of work. It's just going to happen that way, I think. Uh, if you agree, go ahead and comment down below. Sorry for the uh, the phone calls all over. Um, but if you're watching on YouTube, that's where we have the conversation. So talk there. Um, but after second spring... There are also some things going on right now with, uh, um, not buyouts, what am I thinking? The, the, the uh, bailouts, oh my gosh. Uh, with the bailouts, that uh, a lot of this, uh, you're able to get low interest loans. And with those, you're also able to take that and instead of a low interest loan, depending on what you're spending it on, they would like to give that as a grant to companies, which is ridiculous for reinvesting and everything else so a lot of people are going to be getting into that kind of thing maybe you'll get stimulus money maybe you'll have that where again if that stimulus money comes to us remember that you have to spend that for it to stimulate the economy if you just save it you know all these people are like oh you that's horrible you're talking about you know getting people to spend it Listen, don't spend it with us. I would love for you to spend it with us because that means you're reinvesting in your company. 862-312-2026, of course. But uh, no, really, you're reinvesting in your company. We, we, we run ATMs. That's what we do. And if you could take money, put it in, put your card in, you can pull more money out. That's what you do. If you reinvest in your company, you're going to uh, increase that amount. You're going to take that amount instead of buying cheeseburgers with it which do nothing, you know, they don't add any value. You can now put this in your company, invest it in your company. Now your company is even more strong. You're going to be able to yield on that money. So something to think about anyway. But when that comes, 
if you're doing grants, if you're getting the stimulus, if you're getting all that, you're going to see the boost of, of uh, people wanting to spend that back into the community. That's the big thing. That's the really big thing that we got to wait for is that as soon as that comes back and people are like, okay, I have this money, I have to spend this money to make this thing work, it brings the economy back, people spending the money are going to spend it on services like what you have. They're going to spend it on equipment like we have, right? So it's going to be this big rotation of getting services back up, which is going to help boost the economy. Not only when the economy starts boosting, people start getting secure and they want to spend on other money also, on top of the stimulus money, on top of the grants that you're spending, reinvesting in your business. The, the, the laid out infrastructure for this whole thing to play out is going to be absolutely not like anything we've seen or done before. The way that we can go from an economy issue or collapse that we have back to where we're going to be in, say, a month, two months from now, is going to be pretty, pretty amazing. Everything is in play now to make this all happen, which is absolutely phenomenal. And you guys are going to be on that side of things. I mean, people will be spending the money on you. Because again, $1,000, some people are going, well, yeah, they're going to spend it on bills. Yeah, but not everybody, not our clients need to spend it on bills. Our clients have savings. It's not like that. It's If they spend it on bills, fine. It doesn't matter where the money goes because if they spend it on bills, it frees up money that they can... You, We're going to spend on bills, they'll spend it on you. Like We need to capitalize on that because, again, that's what this is for, the stimulus. If it's not being spent, it's not stimulating the economy, and we are the economy, just like anybody else. Now, that doesn't mean you have to necessarily have sales and things and blah, because people are going to be coming to us. It's going to be spring where we don't really run sales in spring anyway because there's so much demand for what we have. What we need to do is get ready with our advertising. If you have Facebook ads, if you have, we were talking about prints, if you have all of that, you need to have that ready for not only spring happening, second spring happening, but the stimulus that's coming out even quicker than that. Right? So having all this stuff is where we're at now. We're just, we're basically ready for the race. We're down and we're in the chocks. We're ready to go. We're just waiting for that, that, that gunfire to, uh, to signal us to start. So that's kind of where this planning is. There's a big thing right now that's going around too that I really, 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 really agree with. And that is working eight hours a day even if you don't have eight hours of work. Like I'm talking to guys who are like, ah, oh, I'm playing video games. And that's cool, do that. I mean, you know. Obviously, there's only so much thumb twiddling you can do. But what if you put all that time, we're not out there cleaning windows, put it back into your business. The strong are going to pull through this. And if you're listening to this, you're one of the strong. As much as you don't feel like it now, you are one of the strong. And the reason is, is because you care about your company. You're listening and watching a podcast about business because you are reinvesting knowledge into your company. Not to say that I provide knowledge with everything, but you know what I'm saying? You're taking that initiative where somebody else may be playing a video game. You're over there listening to a podcast. You're over there uh, uh, researching things and building SEO and uh, doing your, your, your templates and redoing your website. And You people who are out there, <laughs> you people, you people who are out there doing that, you know you're going to be a, you're going to be golden on this. You're going to be stronger coming out of this too because you're going to be doing all this building on your company that once this all happens, you've got nothing but 40 hours a week of building your company. It's a luxury that we normally don't have. As much as it sucks because we're not making any money doing that, we're yielding money in the future. So again, we're building company even stronger by not by having the opportunity to build it stronger. It's, it's hard to not fall down that well of, of sorrow and despair, but that's really what's going on. Motivate yourself somehow, some way to build your business because this is, could be short-lived. I'm thinking it's going to be short-lived. If it is short-lived, we need to do this now so that when it turns, we're ready because those who are going to be ready are going to yield the most. Those who are not ready are not going to yield. It's crazy to think about. It's the, the, the timing and the amount of companies who are not healthy. And maybe some of you weren't healthy before and now you're struggling. You're going to make it through this, of course, because you're, you're strong. But 
you're going to be stronger even after because you're going to run things a little different in case something like this happens. This is going to show you some weaknesses you may have, right? The big thing about all of this that's happening is that if you are a small business, you get to evaluate yourself on a scale that's never been done before. This has never happened. So now we get to look at our businesses from another side that we never even imagined was a possibility or a side. That's a lot of benefit to being able to get that microscope out and look at your company. Whoa, like we did not have enough cash on hand. Now this may never happen again in our existence. Hopefully it never happens again, right? But you're understanding that the storm, if a storm comes in, you may not be able to weather it very easily. So it's going to benefit you. It really is going to benefit you. It's just the mindset thing. The, the dark side. If you know who T-Squeegee is from um, Squeegee, the Squeegee Life podcast, uh, he's one of those guys. He's the quintessential fell down a well guy who was like, ah, oh, it's over. It's done. Like This is horrible. I can't. Uh, it's that bad. It's like, that's the type of person he is. It's very easy to fall into that until you get to the bottom and you go, oh, like, this isn't a well, it's a tunnel, right? It's a tunnel. You may be at the bottom of it. You may be in the bottom of the, the, the mine shaft, but you can just walk out. It's taken some time, but we are going to walk out to light. That is uh, from Bobby Walker, Life of a New Entrepreneur. But the thing is, is that we wouldn't have been able to see any of that until we hit to where we are. Now, things, depending on where we are, may go down or go up, but what we have to do is be ready for them to go up because we know this is temporary. As much as we're just in despair and like, this sucks, like my kids are home. Home schooled until May 15th. Like I'm thinking this is all quarantine. Everything else is going to be back in probably two weeks. It's it's one of those things that's going to be crazy for everybody. But still, think of fall. Think of fall this year. Another thing T. Squeegee said um, on that is that this fall could be everybody's record season in the history of their company. Because what's going to happen is even if you miss spring, even if they're still uncertain in second spring, they're going to be ready by fall. Hey, you know what? We didn't even do it in spring. Now, I'm not saying we're not making money in spring. I still think it's going to be amazing. It's going to be probably our best year ever, ever, because of all this. But fall is going to be just uh, um, my just it's going to be a huge storm of of people wanting work we got to be ready for all that so that's the big thing that's going to happen with all this is that the seasons may change a little bit but the uh, demand is still going to be there i have to say and this whole process too one of the greatest things that we've seen now this going back if you remember september 11th and i know we have a lot of uh, uh younger people that may not have remembered as much but the despair from September 11th was instantly transformed into patriotism and pride and all that. If anybody who is not part of the U.S. Uh, is watching or listening to, if there was a big thing that happened was that everybody was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this happened, to, oh my gosh, like, let's put up a flag. So there was this weird bonding thing that kind of came out of it, and the patriotism uh, and the 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 love for the country grew because of that type of thing. So there's always good that will come out of it. And this one here, the most interesting thing that I've seen so far is the hashtag save small business mindset. And I love if you guys are using uh, social media, hashtag save small business. I don't even know others are using that, but I've started using that to try to maybe ramp that up. But it's the same concept that these people are doing this. And hey, why don't you go out to eat? Because that'll help the restaurant. Why don't you not cook? Because you'll help that little mom and pa restaurant with their drive through They're trying to get orders. You can go pick it up. People should do that. Hey, what about uh, this You know, um, uh, grocery store that delivers? Do that because now you're delivering. You're paying somebody to deliver the groceries for you. They're making money. They're not being laid off. Like there's a... Big, big push for people that are like, hey, let's make sure small businesses are not being left behind. This grant money stuff that's all going down, that's crazy because that grant money is a push for small business. 
Nothing wrong with big business, obviously, right? Those guys are hurting just like we are in small business, but small business is affected a lot quicker, right? It changes because if my small business is affected, my daughter doesn't have dance or whatever, whatever your kids are into, right? So saving small business is huge in people's minds. The cool thing about this whole thing is that we're small business, we're going to fall into that. People are really going to be like, hey, let's look out. I've heard stories just since this is all, this is so fast, by the way. We're talking in the past two weeks, it went from like, man, it's awesome, it's spring, to like, whoa, nothing's going on, right? The big thing that I've seen is that people are getting checks. Like, I heard somebody had gotten, they sent them, their normal cleaning's 300 bucks. They sent them a $500 check, and said, I know you're going to need this money now. Just take that and we'll we'll get services later. Like there's things in restaurants. They're calling restaurant bonds. Which is like if you give us $75, we'll give you $100 worth of food when all this is over. Like those concepts where people are like absolutely okay with making small businesses get some money because they need it more is uh, is unprecedented. I don't remember a time when that happened. So hashtag save small business is going to be huge. Now, how this is also going to play is on the backside of this. That's why we're going to get second spring. That's why that's going to happen is because people are like, hey, small businesses are still hurting, guys. Let's help them. Let's help them. And everybody's going to get behind it. And we're going to be the ones that are benefiting on the other side. Now, here's the thing. The, The whole mindset of like, well... Oh, it shouldn't be us. They should be they should be spending that money on on the more for if that's your thought, awesome. But here's the thing, your small business is not in any other position than another small business. So don't be sad by knowing that we're going to be yielding the benefits that come from this. Like that's the point of small business. If you're employing people, and if you're not employing people, you're employing yourself. But if you employ people, say you got 10 employees, that's 10 families. Say you got five employees. That's five families that you're supporting, that your company is supporting. If people are reinvesting and their hashtag save small business back to you, your company is paying those five families. You're saving five families. You're making five families be able to eat and not worry every minute of the day. Maybe five families not lose sleep over where they're going to get the money to pay their bills. That's the responsibility we have as business owners. If you are a small business owner and you work just by yourself, it's the same thing of you. If your business fails, where do you make your money? I'm guessing that most, most, almost all of us are the breadwinners in our family, right? A business owner usually has not only all the burden of the business, but the burden of being the financial provider. If we're in uncertainty ourselves, And if our companies are not doing well, do you know the strain? Not only are we worried about our employees' families, our bills, our truck payments, our customers, where are they going to go, our our, uh, mortgage on properties. But now we're also worried about, okay, well, what about my family? I started this thing. My family came with me on this ride of being a small business owner. Now I can't provide them with enough certainty or security or money I'm failing now as that. Like, this is why business owners, A, we're losing our hair or getting gray, right? Which, by the way, you can see it. You can see it. It's thinning. It's thinning. Um, but there's so much more pressure on us. That's why a lot, not everybody can be a business owner. Not everybody can handle the pressure of what's going on. And that kind of brings me to another point, is that market share, when this is all done, unfortunately, is going to change. And the absolute truth to this is that, and I really truly think that none of us, anybody who's listening or watching this, you again, you're investing in yourself. You're doing the work eight hours if you don't have eight hours of work. You're doing that. You're investing in your company because you're strengthening it. There's a lot of people out there that we knew that were in our area, maybe Bucket Bob's, Maybe companies who just were like, yeah, yeah, whatever. I don't even know forums exist. They've never checked anything. They've never watched or listened or read or learned or anything. This could destroy their company. 
And that's sad. I don't want anybody to lose their job, but you know it's going to happen. They may go from five employees to two employees. Now there's three less window cleaners in just that one company. The market share is going to change. The benefit to that, if you ever could put a positive spin on something so negative, and mind you, I would never want anybody to fail. That's not what I'm saying here. Uh, thumbs down the video if you would like. But um, what I'm saying is, is that the market share is going to change and it's going to go to the stronger companies. Stronger companies are going to absorb where the weaker companies left off. It's just going to happen. What if you're the stronger company? What if you're the stronger company? This year, you could gain 5, 10, 25% of the market share this year. Those are huge, huge claims. But it could definitely happen. There's companies that you'll have multiple companies in a city stop. There's companies who are like, hey, this just isn't working. Like, I'm not going to do it. And then when this all comes back in, they're not going to have the strength to go. Where does all that route work go from the guys who are just doing this for, for beer money? Where do all those route jobs go? Guys aren't going to show up for months. They're going to call somebody. You're going to be ready to pick up the slack of everybody else. You have to be ready to push yourself. Say, hey, everybody, we're here. If you don't have somebody right now, you've lost somebody or they're not coming around or they just disappeared, we're here to pick up the slack. That's how you claim that 25% market share increase. We're the strong. The strong will survive. You've heard that. But how do they survive? That's how this is all going to play out. That's why a second spring or fall or route work or these commercial jobs, we had to put things on hold, but now they're going to have their building owners and everything breathing down their necks like, man, this building looks like crap. Let's get it back. All right, well, this this window cleaner can't do it. He's not even in, back in business. He had to sell all of his equipment because he couldn't eat. Now this all comes back. This is where the strength side comes. And this is why I really, truly think that us and the strong are going to come back tenfold compared to anybody else. Not only are there going to be people that jump out of the market, there's going to be people that need somebody instantly and you're still strong. You're going to be put in front of them and they're going to choose you. And now they're going to always use you because they understand that they need a strong company. Anytime there's adversity or uh, downside to anything, the positive side is when it comes back. And that's what's going to happen. Like we're all on that same side. Market share is going to increase for everybody. It's going to decrease for some. And I don't really think it's going to be any of us. There's a lot of, just think about people that are in your area. You talk to, you've never seen, heard from, you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to the huge convention, we'll say. And they go, what? There's a convention? I'm telling you, every time we've ever had a convention, every single time, no matter what state we're in, city, you'll see window cleaners cleaning and like, oh, hey, we got a big convention. There's like 1,500 people, 1,500 window cleaners and pressure washers up the street at the convention. They're like, what? It's in their town. Like, you have to be living under a rock for some of this stuff. But you guys and girls that are watching, listening, you already know that your company is strong. Like, this is why you're doing this. The people who don't care, as soon as this happened, well, man, everybody's backing up. I guess I'm just going to hang out. I'm going to stay at home. Like, you sometimes can't re re uh, come back from that. Ruh, ruh, ruh. I don't know what that was, but... And that's where we are. I mean, that's really where we are. The light at the end of this tunnel is just that. We just don't know how far the tunnel is right now. It's the concept of a train tunnel. Is why you should never go through a train tunnel is because you can't visually understand how far the other side is. And that's really what this is right now. The only reason there's uncertainty of this is because we don't know the timeline. If somebody said, hey, guess what? In two weeks from now, this will all be over with. Well, then we can go, okay, well, in three weeks from now, then the economy is going to be on the up and up and people are going to want it. But we don't know that. So right now we just have to do everything we can to prepare for when it does happen. And I'm telling you, mark my words. Hashtag save small business. People are going to love, love small businesses. Second spring is going to happen. Where for us, we're going to have an extra season this year. And this year in fall is going to be the best fall we've ever had ever. Because it's going to be compensating in for spring. The other thing is market share. If you are on top of it, if you are there and you're ready, 
you're going to increase your market share this year. I would bet you 50 cents. Because there's a lot of you. I can't bet you a lot of money on everything. By the way, I bet uh, uh, Squeegee Life podcast money that he couldn't do push-ups. And he did 10 push-ups. And I had to pay him $10.75. <laughs> I'm a big spender. I'm a big spender. Hey, we're all, we're all tightening things up right now, right? But speaking of that, if you want to get your uh, equipment ordered, um, I'm I'm asking, I'm begging for me to be your rep. I want to be your rep. Understand that you guys ordering through me is how I pay my bills. I have no other forms of income, obviously. So this is it. So um, don't ever think that uh, should I put an order in with you? Should I not? Put everything in through me. I would genuinely appreciate it. Even when somebody's like, hey, I got to get this. It's like, we have free shipping right now over $49. And people are like at 53 bucks. Hey, I got this little order. Dude, that's awesome. That's awesome. They all add up. They all add up. So I really appreciate it, big or small. If you have any questions on any type of products, I'm your man. I want to be your rep. If you got an insurance guy, you got a banker, you got all that, why not have a supplies guy? Why not have a guy? That's me. My number, 862-312-2026. That is my cell phone, too. So call me, text me. My email, if you want to send questions or you want to just talk on a longer basis or something you could print out, is jersey at windowcleaner.com. Uh, we're here. We're here through the whole thing, and now's the time to learn and uh, be better. So I'm here for you guys. Um, this ye- This code is uh, everything is fine. If you tell me that code, (sighs) everything is fine. Text it to me, call me, tell me, email me, whatever. You're going to get 5% off your entire order, no matter how big it is. And free shipping. And uh, and you're going to make my day. Because putting orders in through me is how I make my cheddar. So thank you. Um, 862-312-2026. Go out there. Work as much as you can on your business right now. Uh, Try to keep your chin up. I know it's very, very hard for me. I try to be a positive person, and it's really, it's been difficult. If you need somebody to talk to, I'm here. And uh, most importantly, until next week, go out there and be epic.